in the 80s, in 1980s, uh, there were about 11 textile factories in Kenya. Mm. And then slowly by slowly, uh, all of them began to close down. Mm. And when they closed down, then of course farmers had nowhere else to sell their cotton. Mm. So they stopped growing cotton. So it meant really desperation. There are some areas where nothing else can grow but cotton. And I think we have done wonders by reviving the cotton industry. My name is uh, Professor Richard Mibay, and I'm the Vice Chancellor of uh, Moi University. What I wanted to do for Moi University was to have a university which is more practical in nature. Right now, we are at, at a place called Rivatex, a company that uh, makes textiles, fully owned by Mo University for training, income generating, and research. Rivertex had been dormant for 10 years when Professor Maybe convinced the university and the government to partner and to buy the factory as a place to conduct more practical research, train and create jobs. Actually, when we came here, there was no roof. The whole roof was gone. Yeah. We bought the factory using money that we had saved from the university. Modernization, we got assistance from the, from the government. And I think the government has spent ten times what we originally spent. After successfully reviving the factory and breathing life back into smallholder cotton farms, maybe needed dye, but couldn't get it. I now zeroed in on getting a solution by coming up with uh, natural dyes. The answer came in an unexpected form. I did not expect that a weed can make me money. A weed, Mexican marigold, that grows wild in the region. Abraham Barakoria, a farmer, struggled to feed his family from poor yielding crops. I became demoralized to the maize farming and I left the farm without plowing. With no input, the Mexican marigold grew, a new crop in demand at Moore University. The extra money I use it to, uh, to educate my children. I take care of my family, buying foodstuffs like maize now. From Abraham's farm, the now available weed is taken to the university. I would like to welcome you to our Dambitai processing plant here at Moi University. These are the inflorescences, the flowery part of Dambitai. We take this one, we dry them, we crush them. The border here now, we shall extract the dye from the border. Forum has used a series of graduate research grants to support Moi in its efforts to develop smallholder farmers, generate income, employment and practical experience for its graduates. The research is important especially now that the farmers are embracing the project. So it is good that we look at the optimum conditions that these farmers can produce this crop with the dye of higher quality. I'm passionate at the moment because of the environmental effects caused by synthetic dyes. A lot of people are moving from synthetic dyes to natural dyes. With the dye problem solved, the factory was ready for business. We decided now to do value addition to the material that we are making. So now we are able to sell finished products because of this room. This is big business. The output of the factory is about 20,000 meters a day. Yeah. Mm. Textile research innovations have multiplied with RU Forum grantees like Charles Wutaka, a Ugandan who is developing solutions for global problems. In uh, East Africa, we've had a very big challenge with polythene bags, especially when it comes to the environment. The major reason has always been that there is not enough research. My dream is to be a specialist in environmental textiles. We are uh, looked at globally now as a university that is uh, good in innovations. It's kind of like a center for excellence in innovation. I would say that uh, Rio Forum actually helped me to start and they have been supporting me all along. 